Have you ever thought about quitting jujitsu? Of course you have. Everybody that trains jujitsu at some point will think about quitting. Black belts are not immune from that either. Even black belts sometimes think about quitting jujitsu. Let's talk about it. Before we begin, I want to let you know that I have rash guards. Finally, I've gotten a lot of requests for these. My goal is to have an entire line of rash guards with killer designs. This is the first one. This is my flow with the go design inspired by the Hicks and Gracie quote from the film Choke, in which he said, you must flow with the go. This is a point beyond knowledge. And I love that quote. Some people think he misspoke, that he meant to say go with the flow, but I think there's something really poetic about saying flow with the go because that embodies the essence of jujitsu, which is taking someone's energy, maybe they're bigger, stronger, faster, and taking their energy and using it against it, adding to their energy, flowing with their energy. That's the essence of jujitsu. So if you're interested in getting a rash guard, you can go to rickellis.com. And while you're there, if you're interested in any of my instructional courses, go ahead and grab a coupon code from the description below. I'm always going to have a coupon code so you can get my stuff at a discount. So why do people quit jujitsu? <laughs> Most people will quit jujitsu. Probably 70% of white belts will quit jujitsu. And of the 30% that remain, probably 70% of them will quit at blue belt. And of the 30% that remain, a big chunk will quit at purple belt and another chunk will quit at brown belt. Even black belts quit jujitsu. And the question is, why? Well, it's my conviction that people quit an activity when they're not having enough fun. Real simple, you're not having enough fun because if you love something, you will find reasons to do it. And, and look, everything takes discipline, everything takes dedication. If you want to become a great musician, you're going to have to practice a lot and practicing isn't always fun. So there's a certain amount of discipline and dedication that you're going to have to have even in the face of activities that aren't always enjoyable. but if there isn't a fundamental love of that thing you're doing, then you're not going to last very long and you're going to quit. And the question in a jujitsu context is, what is it about jujitsu that's not fun? Well, probably the least fun part of jujitsu is the unrealistic expectations that a lot of people have about themselves which puts them on what I call the emotional roller coaster. You go train, you don't do as well as you think you should have done, you have expectations of yourself, and you go home and you're feeling down. You come back the next day and maybe you do great and you're riding high and you're, you know, everything's fantastic. You come back to train the next night, you don't do as well, and now there's a letdown. So you're on this, this sine wave of emotionality. One day you're high, one day you're low, and that can turn into a real grind. Now, why do people get on the roller coaster? Well, they get on the roller coaster because of unrealistic expectations. And I've talked about this subject a few times on this channel, that having unrealistic expectations can be a real killer. It can be a real killer in, in everything in life. I think that we need to manage our expectations. That's one of the keys to happiness, is keeping your expectations under control. And I'm gonna explain what I mean by that. So why do people have unrealistic expectations? Well, in jujitsu, there is always, because it's a performance-based martial art, it's a live art, it's, a, it's an art in which, uh, it's a performance-based art, there is always a desire in jiu-jitsu to represent your belt perfectly. If you're a blue belt, you want to be able to tap all the white belts. If you're purple, you want to be able to tap all the blue belts and below. And that never goes away, that, that desire. Even black belts have that pressure. And in fact, as a black belt, there's even more pressure because, man, you're a black belt. You should be able to handle the business at hand and take care of everybody on the mat. 
But the truth is we all come in different shapes and sizes. We all have different physical attributes. We all have uh, a different age. We all have different mental attributes. We all are di different in the way that we can learn and amass information and develop skill. There's a reason why in combat sports there are weight categories, because even a five pound, 10 pound difference makes a difference. And uh, so in jujitsu, we're sparring against everybody. And so you have this expectation that you're a blue belt, you should be able to handle everybody. Well, you're going up against this white belt that maybe he used to wrestle, maybe he's 20 pounds heavier than you, maybe he's 10 pounds or 10 years younger than you, and you struggle. You struggle against them and you feel bad about yourself. You get done training and you think, man, I didn't do as well as I could have. And now you're in the, the bottom part of the sine wave feeling bad about yourself. And that's when you have that, um, that emotional deflation. And that's when maybe you think about quitting. And listen, I, I have felt that many, many times. I've had many training sessions where I will go train and I leave it all on the mat and I don't do as well as I think that I should have and I come home depleted, just feeling thrash, feeling like I went to war. And in that moment, there's always kind of an emotional depletion. And that's when those thoughts creep in and you think, why am I doing this to myself? So what can we do to manage expectations? Let me say that it's okay to have expectations, but you should only have expectations about things that you can control. You can control your attitude. You can control how positive you feel going to class. You can control whether you show up in a clean gi. You can control whether you uh, show up on time. You can have an expectation that you're gonna do the entire warm up without half-assing it. You can uh, have an expectation that you're gonna exhibit joy when you roll. Those things are totally under your control. What's not entirely under control is whether you're gonna get the tap whether you're going to dominate somebody, whether you're going to be able to escape side control, whether you're going to be able to, you know, uh, execute your jujitsu to a level that you would like to, that's not fully under your control. The person you bump fists with has a big say in that as well. And so we need to put away expectations of result. Expectations of result. You can have expectations of performance in the sense that you're going to, you're going to, uh, not quit, you're not going to give up, you're going to have resolve, you're going to not concede, you're going to, you know, push yourself. You can't have an expectation of result because that is not entirely under your control. And if you can do that, and if you can get off of the roller coaster, then you stand a much better chance of training jujitsu over the long haul because you're not having these emotional letdowns every time you train. We as humans have a negativity bias. We will always remember negative things far more than positive things. It's just the way that humans are wired. And if you have a negative experience in the dojo, it's going to seem more magnified than, than those positive experiences. And so we have to get rid of the negativity bias and simply go train for a whole bunch of positive reasons. And I'll give you a few of the reasons why I train and I try to focus on those things because those are positive reasons to continue to train even if you don't do well on any given night. So why do I train? I'll give you a few reasons. And I'm curious to hear from you guys down below. Why do you continue to train jujitsu? What is it that keeps you motivated, keeps you coming back to class multiple times a week and doing it. Uh, for me, I'll give you a few reasons. The first is that jujitsu gives you what I would call a neurological reset. I've tried many other physical activities in my life and there is nothing like the way jujitsu makes you feel after training because of all the dynamic problem solving, because all the weird angles, because of the isometric tensioning, because of just the contortions we have to do. It hits your central nervous system in a really intense and powerful way. And as a man, it feels very, very good to get that reboot. It's very common, especially if you're a little OCD like I am, to have 
a running narrative that you can't break free of. Maybe you're having uh, financial issues, maybe you're having a relationship issue, maybe there's just something on your mind. It's real easy to get into this uh, mental state where you're just caught in a loop. One of the ways that we can break free from that is through meditation. And the truth is, I'm not a great meditator. It's very hard for me to completely calm and empty my mind. But it's in the clearing of the mind, it's sort of like rebooting the computer when it starts being sluggish. You get a whole new set of processes that have booted up fresh, and now the computer is running well again. And jujitsu does that for me. I consider jujitsu to be dynamic meditation. It's meditation because when you're on the mat, you can't think about anything else. All the problems in your life, they're gone. Last year, I was going through a, a divorce. I shut a company down that was very difficult for me. I had a, you know, uh, a business failure. and I was going through a tough time last year. The only thing that kept me, that was my salvation, was going to jujitsu because in that time that I was on the mat, that's it, you're not thinking about anything else. And it has a reset uh, ability to it that I really like. So that's number one. The second reason I train jujitsu is because I believe that as a man, I should have the ability to defend myself, defend my family, and I should have enough physical capability to deal with something unexpected. Let's say the power grid goes out and I have to hike 20 miles carrying a heavy pack. I want to be able to do that. And so jujitsu gives me a great workout. It makes me more physically capable. It makes me more resilient. It makes me stronger. It gives me um, <clears throat> the ability to be more mentally strong. You have to be mentally strong to, do, to train jujitsu. And the more you train, the more mentally tough you'll get. And I love that and that's important to me. I also train jujitsu because I find it to be very mentally stimulating. It is the greatest combination of physical challenge and mental challenge that I've ever experienced. I get bored easy and I'm one of these people that is able to master things relatively quickly and so then I get bored and I move on to that next thing but jujitsu is different because it's not just a physical activity, there's a real strong mental component to it um, that I find fascinating. I find it, the longer I train, the, the deeper the lessons get, the more I understand the angles and the leverage and the points of connection. And it's, it's this, this puzzle, this never ending puzzle that you can't solve in its entirety. You simply get little bits and pieces and you start building clusters of the puzzle here and clusters of the puzzle here. And there's a connection missing, but with enough training, you start making those connections. And I find that absolutely fascinating. Uh, so those are three reasons why I train. I could give you a bunch of others. And I try to focus on those things, especially when I'm feeling beat up, especially when I'm, uh, you know, not feeling like going to class because, you know, as I get older, recovery is hard and I'm not always in the mood to go train, but it's focusing on those positive things, focusing on the fact that if I don't go, my training partners are getting better and now I'm gonna have some catching up to do and that keeps me going too. So I'm curious to hear from you guys why you continue to train. And if you're somebody that feels like quitting jujitsu, I would counsel you to recalibrate the way you think about jujitsu. Just go there to have fun with your friends. I didn't mention the camaraderie, the friendships. That's a huge part of why I continue to train as well. My best friends in the world are all jujitsu people. And so focus on that. You're going to train with your friends. You're going to hang out with your friends. Listen, if you get tapped, so what? If you don't do very well, it's okay. Because even on those nights when you didn't do well, you improved. So focus on those things and I wish you success and I look forward to talking to you next time.